Tell me about, in the simplest terms as you can, the pros and cons of, of the Dodd-Frank Act. Well, I think the, the Dodd-Frank Act actually, at its core, had a very simple purpose, which was to respond to the political opposition to bailing out the big banks on Wall Street. So the Obama administration and Tim Geithner, with the support of Wall Street leaders, recognizing that there had been a lot of negative reaction among the people. Why should taxpayer dollars go to bail out all these wealthy people who have been making millions and millions and tanked the economy and there, were, there was anger out there? So Dodd-Frank at the core was, had a very simple objective, which was just to prevent bailouts by the public in the future. And there are three or four provisions that were designed to, to achieve that, so that any losses generated by Wall Street would be absorbed by Wall Street, not by the people. But that means that Dodd-Frank was not designed to prevent future financial crises. So it didn't really go to the core dynamics that make for financial collapse. In terms of, um, there seems to be this, I don't, maybe a, a pattern if we can call it, too much regulation in the EU and maybe not enough in the United States. Do you think that's the case? Do you think, um, and we've got some of the same people who helped put us in the financial crisis uh, reappointed in the U.S. system, very, very uh, important in top positions still to this day, and that's very scary. What is your feedback and reaction to that? And what do you think should be different? Well, what you're talking about reflects the two different political systems and the two different political cultures. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting to your second point, first in the United States, in order to run for office, House of Representatives, uh, Senate, and particularly President of the United States, you need huge amounts of money. Therefore, people who can provide huge, huge amounts of money, like people in Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, uh, investment bankers, bankers, etc., they are needed by both parties. And if you provide a lot of money to, to politicians, they will listen to you. So Wall Street is always at the table in designing a way, the way the Americans respond. And I think it's um, the last four or five chiefs of staff of the United States president have either co have come from Goldman Sachs or have a close relationship with Goldman Sachs, which, which is, is a cronyism that we Americans should be embarrassed about. Uh, it reflects sort of more, more autocratic regimes in other parts of the world. But there's some systemic reason as to why the White House likes to have a very close connection to Wall Street. Secondly, the American political culture has, has reflected a kind of individualism where we allow business to go haywire up front and then we step in and we try to remedy the mistakes and after the fact. The old American phrase is you, you close the barn door after the horses have fled. Whereas the European sort of notice of, uh, a notion that the state is, is like the, our older brother or perhaps a father or somebody. They try to prevent the problems from happening uh, at the start. And the way you do that is you overregulate up front because you're always sort of suspicious of the private sector and individualism. So, and, what, and the American tradition, ref, some people say, reflects the Wild West. That's why they call it cowboy capitalism. And the European tradition reflects you know, centuries of, of, I think it goes back as far to when the church and state were one under the Catholic Church, where, where the Catholic Church and the, and the dukes and the princes and the kings were trying to create God's order on earth. So they were organizing everything from the top down. And America has always been a bottom-up kind of society.